This video is an update to one of my earlier tutorials where I demonstrate how you can sync an Outlook calendar to a SharePoint list. Now in that tutorial, I specifically demonstrate how you can create a Power Automate workflow that creates a new item in a SharePoint list every time an Outlook event is scheduled. And the workflow will also update a SharePoint list item when the corresponding Outlook event is updated. And it will also delete items when the corresponding Outlook event is canceled. Now, since I've published that tutorial, it has become one of my most popular videos. And I've also had a lot of people drop comments on that video telling me that the workflow has resulted in duplicate entries. So in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of rebuilding that workflow in a much more efficient manner and I'm also going to incorporate some logic to prevent the workflow from creating duplicate entries. Now let's go ahead and let's get started building the updated workflow. Now you can see here that I'm on the Power Automate Creative Flow page. Now the first thing that I will do is select Automated Cloud Flow. And the next thing that I will do is give this flow a name. Next, I'll go ahead and search for our trigger. Now for this flow, we are going to use the Microsoft Outlook connector and specifically the trigger when an event is created, updated, or deleted. Now I'll go ahead and search for when an event, and I will scroll down here and we are going to select this option here that says when an event is added, updated, or deleted version three. Now I'll go ahead and click this and I will click create. And you can see here that we now have our workflow. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is configure our trigger. Now you can see here that it reads invalid parameters. So I'll go ahead and click on this. And what we need to do is we actually need to specify which calendar we are going to be working with. Now I will click into the calendar ID field and I want this flow to check my individual calendar and to do that, I will go ahead and select calendar here. Next, we're going to build out our workflow. And so I will click on the add an action button. And here I will search for a switch control. Now I will go ahead and select this here. Now with our switch control, the first thing that we need to do is specify what field are we going to be switching on. Now to do this, you wanna click on your switch control and then you want to click into the on field. And here I will click on the dynamic content pane. And what we are going to do is we are going to look for the field called action type. Now I'll click on see more and you can see here this field called action type. And what this field does is it actually determines what type of Outlook event is happening. Now, if an event is being created in Outlook, that is equivalent to added in this action type field. If an event is being updated, that is equivalent to updated. And if an Outlook event is being canceled, then that is equivalent to deleted. Now I'll go ahead and select this value. And the next thing that we actually need to do is build out our switch blocks. To do this, you want to click on this plus button, which is the add a case button. Now I'll go ahead and click this and I'll actually click this three times so that we can build out those three paths through our workflow. Now, one of the things that I like to do is rename my actions in my flow so that it's explicitly clear what they do. Now to do this for the case blocks, you wanna click on your first case block and you wanna click up here and enter in a descriptive name. Now you can see here that I've called this first one case Outlook event is added, and then I'll go ahead and do this for the other two case blocks as well. Now, if you're looking to build this workflow and you want to save yourself some time, you can actually download a copy of the flow that I've developed in this tutorial. In order to get your copy, all you need to do is click the link in the description of the video below, or that link in the upper right hand corner of your screen, sign up and then go ahead and check your inbox for the actual flow package and a document outlining how you can import that into your Microsoft tenant. 
All right, now the next thing that we need to do is actually enter the switch control conditions for each case block. Now to do this, you wanna click into your case block and I will start with the added case block. And in the equals field, we want to enter the value added. Next, you wanna click on your second case block and enter the value updated. And last, you wanna click on the third case block and enter the equals value deleted. Next, we're going to build out the first case block. Now I'll go ahead and click on the case block here and then add a new action. And we are going to search for the SharePoint get items action. Now I'll go ahead and select this option. And next I need to select my SharePoint list. To do this, click on the site address field and click on the SharePoint site. Then you need to select your SharePoint list. To do this, click in the list name field and select your list. I'll go ahead and select my training calendar. And now I've configured this action. Now, before we continue, I've quickly brought up the SharePoint list that I'm using in this workflow. Now you can see here that this list features columns called title, which we'll use to store the Outlook event subject, the start date and time, the end date and time, the description, which we'll use to store the body of the Outlook events. There is a field called event identifier, which will be used to store the Outlook events unique ID and a field for the URL to the Outlook event. Now in this video, I'm not covering how to create the SharePoint list, if you need guidance on how to do that, you wanna be sure to check out the first video. Again, I've included a link to that video in the description below. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is apply a filter condition to our get items action. Now, this is one of the improvements that I've implemented in this workflow based on feedback I've received from viewers and it will allow this workflow to be more efficient. Now to apply a filter to this action, you want to click on show all and you want to place your cursor in the filter query field. Next, you want to enter the name of your SharePoint list column that you're using to store the Outlook event ID. Now in my list, that is called event identifier. So I've entered that here, followed by EQ, which represents equals. And next I will type two single quotation marks and I will place my cursor between them. Next I'll go ahead and click on the dynamic content pane and I will search for the ID field from our trigger action. Now I'll go ahead and select this value here. Now this filter query is also the first part of the duplicate check that we'll incorporate in the workflow. Essentially what this filter query is doing is it is saying fetch all of the items in our SharePoint list and filter to only return the items whose event identifier column or field equals the ID coming from the Outlook event that triggered this workflow. Now the next thing that we'll do is add a new action in our first case block. So I'll go ahead and click this button here. And we are going to add a condition control. So I'll select control and then I'll go ahead and select condition here. And you can see that this now allows us to build out an if else block. Now I'll go ahead and place my value in this choose a value field. And next I'll click on insert expression. Now in the insert expression compose box, I'll go ahead and type the word length followed by brackets. And inside the brackets, I will click on the dynamic content option and I will select this option here that reads body value coming from our get items action in the Outlook event is added case block. So I'll go ahead and click on it and click add. Next, I'll go ahead and place my cursor in the choose a value field and I will enter the value zero. Now what this expression is doing is it's actually counting the number of records returned by this get items action. Now if the number of records returned is zero, that means that the Outlook event that triggered this workflow does not already exist in our SharePoint list. And so if it's zero, 
then we will build out our create items action in this true block. And if it is not zero, then we're gonna go ahead and terminate this flow because that means that a record already exists in that list that matches the one that is triggering this workflow. Next, I'll go ahead and add a step here in the true block. And this time we are going to use the create item SharePoint action. So I will select that here. Next, we need to select our SharePoint site and our list. Next, I'll click show all. And now we need to map the attributes coming from our Outlook event to the corresponding fields in our SharePoint list. Now I'll demonstrate this for a few fields and then I'll just go ahead and complete this step. Now I'll start by clicking into the title field and I will click on dynamic content and I am going to scroll down to our trigger action and I will click on see more. Now I want the subject of the Outlook event to populate in the title column so I can scroll down and search for that or I can just search for subject. Now I'll go ahead and select this option here. Next, I'll populate my start date and time. So I will click into the field and click on the dynamic content option. Now an important note when it comes to the start date and time and end date and time, you want to make sure that you select the option here with the time zone. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've populated all of my fields here and it's really important to note, you need to make sure that you incorporate the ID value from our trigger in the column of your list that you created to store that unique ID. Next, I'll go ahead and click into the false block and I'll add a new step and here we are going to search for the terminate action. Now I'll go ahead and select terminate here. And now we've built out our first case block for when an Outlook event is added. Next, I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here that our workflow has been saved. All right, now before we build out the rest of the flow, I'm actually gonna test each case block as we build it, just so you can see that it works. Now I've gone ahead and turned the flow on and you can see here that I've brought up my SharePoint list with the calendar view applied. And I've also created an event that I'm about to go ahead and schedule. Now I'll go ahead and click send. You can see that the event was created. And if I go ahead and refresh my SharePoint list, you can see here that this event has been added. I'll double click into it to bring up the edit item form. You can see here that all of the information was populated and just very quickly, I will go ahead and switch to the all items view and you can see here that no duplicate entries were created. All right, next we need to build out our update case block. Now, the first thing that I will do is expand the update case block and then I will click on the insert new action and then I will look for the get items SharePoint connector action. Now I'll go ahead and select it. Next, I'll select my SharePoint site and list. And next, we're going to add the same OData filter query that we used in the get items create event. So I will just go ahead and paste in event identifier equals and then single quotation mark followed by the ID attribute coming from the Outlook event that triggered this workflow. Now what this will do is it will actually go through all of the items in your SharePoint list and it is only going to return the event that has the event identifier value that matches that of the Outlook event that triggered this workflow. Next, I'll go ahead and click on the insert action button and we will search for the update item SharePoint action. I'll go ahead and select this value here. And next, I'll go ahead and select my SharePoint site and list. And the next thing that we need to do is actually specify which item we would like to update. So I will place my cursor in the ID field here. And then I will click into the dynamic content menu and we are going to select this ID attribute that is coming from the previous action, which is the get items update event. Now I'll go ahead and select it and then I'll click on show all. 
And the next thing that we'll need to do is just map all of our fields from the Outlook event that triggered this workflow to the corresponding field in this update item action. Now, an important note when you're doing this and you're clicking into the dynamic content pane, you want to make sure that you're pulling the attributes from the trigger action when an event is added, updated, or deleted. This is going to make sure that it takes the most recent information from that Outlook event and then passes it back into the SharePoint list item. All right, now that I've updated all of my fields, I'll go ahead and click the save button. And you can see here that the workflow has saved successfully. Now you can see here that I've brought up the SharePoint list and I've also brought up Outlook on the right of your screen. Now you can see here that this Outlook event SharePoint list fundamentals training has already been logged in my SharePoint list. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the subject. I'm going to change the description and the start date and time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and submit this and we're gonna watch the workflow do its thing. All right, now you can see here, I've changed the subject line and I've changed the description. Now I'll go ahead and send this. You can see the event has been updated. And if I come over into my SharePoint list and I refresh the page, and I click back into the all items view, you can see here that that entry has now been updated to reflect the changes made in the Outlook event. All right, now the last step is to build out our delete event case block. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and I've added the get items action to this case block. Now this action is the exact same from the previous step. I've connected to my SharePoint site. I've selected my list and I've included the same OData filter query from the previous step. Now, the next thing that we need to do is insert a new action here. And this time we are going to search for the delete item SharePoint action. I'll go ahead and select it here. Then I'll select my SharePoint site and my list. And here, the last thing that we need to do is insert the ID value of the SharePoint list item that we need to delete. Now I'll go ahead and place my cursor in the ID field. I will click into the dynamic content pane and I will select the ID attribute coming from the previous action, which is get items delete event. You can see here that that's been added. Next, I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here that the workflow has been saved successfully. Now you can see here, I've brought my SharePoint list up side by side with the Outlook event from the previous test that we ran. Now I am going to go ahead and cancel this event here. I'll go ahead and click send. You can see that this event has been removed from my calendar. And now I'll come over into my SharePoint list and I will click on the refresh button. And you can see here that that item has been removed from the SharePoint list. So that's it. In this video, I walked you through the process of creating an updated and optimized flow to sync a SharePoint online list with a Microsoft Outlook calendar. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, drop a comment below, click the super thanks button and let me know that you found it helpful. By the way, 100% of super thanks go right back into the channel and help me produce content that helps you get more done using the Microsoft 365 suite. Also, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my new content. I'm Louis Yacobelis. I'll see you in the next video.